we just talk a little bit about your relationship with Anne Tradition and your pieces for them? I understand that a lot of the pieces that are in the showroom today, you guys also chose special fabrics for. True? Yeah. yeah. yeah? Well, I think our relation with the and tradition is one. I mean, I think we've been fortunate that we have uh, that we've been pretty busy since we started our businesses, and uh, and more than anything, I think that we are looking for whether that's a project or that's a collaborator or a sort of a longer, long-term relationship with a manufacturer. We're looking for the right people. We're looking for the right energy. We know that we are gonna spend a lot of time, we are getting up in the morning and we start working and we kind of need to uh, feel engaged and energized by uh, the project of the day. And that was certainly the case with uh, when we met with uh, Martin the first time. Uh, he's, uh, he's the most wonderful, wonderful, kind and warm and uh, sweet person. And he at the same time has this, uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's for his age, he's like uh, extremely talented and skilled within what he's doing, and he has an amazing eye. And uh, and we really sort of, when we went on this journey together, we really felt that that we had a sincere sort of uh, partner in discussing how to go about it. And also, uh, he had the both the uh, the courage to try out new things uh, and to sort of stretch. Uh, the whole phenomena of and tradition, which it's about, it's uh, about linking up to something which is has a recognition somehow, something where you feel you've seen before, and then at the same time, it it does something completely unexpected, uh, and it has sort of a futuristic uh, element as well. You end up at this like rock star design school that is, you know, Jakobsen, Panton, like all these major, major people went there. Like, how did this happen? How did you end up there? So I started a little bit by coincidence and because I was, I was good in drawing and things like that, I thought, okay, it, I knew it should be creative at that point. I was, I was 19. Um, and then it kind of uh, it kind of got to me uh, slowly over the years uh, through a couple of depressions and uh, frustration and things like that. Uh, detours to Japan and film school during the process actually of becoming an architect. Uh, but then it actually really uh, it kind of really got to me. So in a good way. So uh, so I I, I stick. I stick with the architecture uh, in the end. But I worked as a scenographer for many years while I was, was in, 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 in school and thought that that was actually was, was going to be uh, yeah, my future at, you know, in the beginning. Well, I think, you know, for me, it's been likewise and sort of an uneven ride to, towards what it, we ended up doing. And, I certainly had my amount of detours. I, uh, I actually studied theoretical math for a number of years before <laughs> doing, doing uh, art school and architecture. And it wasn't that I didn't like it. It was just before all the algorithms and all the dot com. So I couldn't really see what I was going to use it for. Uh, maybe I should just have waited a little while. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I, I think the fascination I, I, um, I had with it, because I was also questioning why I, I sort of went into that, and it was, I think it has to do with the term abstracts. It's, mathematical is about as abstract as it gets, but it's an abstract that aimed to explain what it is we do. And, and that sort of brings into play the concept of space, the space as an abstraction. And, and the more I sort of, started being disillusioned about what I was actually going to apply my knowledge of math to, sort of the, the idea of space as an abstraction became more and more intriguing. I was a model for about three months. Really? Uh, it, didn't, it, it didn't go very well, and, I, and, and nobody booked me. Um, so you have so, the card, but there were no actual jobs. No, it, exactly. So you probably I, I actually, didn't photograph more I in your I actually went on to have quite a career uh, as a hand model. Oh. Uh, so uh, it all worked out very well, and I actually, uh, all through the art school, I had my hand photographed. Seriously? Seriously. It was very well paid. I was no, very good is. at holding it very still. And um, yeah. Yeah. 
And so you two met there. Yeah, we met there at the academy. Yeah. Do you remember first impressions? Do you remember how you met? Any of that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shall well, I, leave it at I, that? I was I was a few years ahead of uh, of Sina, and um, and we were at a faculty uh, of, of a very famed of the Danish sort of um, architects, Henning Larsen. It was uh, at that point the architecture school was divided into faculties with a professor, and, and each faculty. Uh, bore the name of the professor, and we were at Henning Larsen's. And it was a kind of theoretical place and uh, quite pretentious, I would say, in a way. Oh. Uh, but we did have parties, and, and I remember we did have one party after summer, and uh, Cena walks in, and it was completely impossible not to notice. <laughs> so uh, I, I, think, I, I, think we, we, I think we spoke and had conversation at, at that as a uh, very first encounter. Yeah. That's True. Do you remember what you thought of him? <laughs> Do you remember what you thought of him? A first impression? Anything? Were you thinking he has nice hands? He should model. Actually, <laughs> actually, I really like his nice hands. Okay. I always did. <laughs> and and I would say over the years, sort of as as our team has grown and the kind of work we do, it, it sort of makes it. You go through certain transitions, and and I would say you draw more than I do these days, and. I put a lot into conversations with our team and kind of, uh, it, it's sort of, uh, it, and then I think we're very good at, at sort of, uh, we, we sit, our office is, has two tables just facing each other. So, oh, wow. so we sort of look at each other, I would say like 10 hours a day. So, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're communicating constantly. I, I think it's, it's one, of, one of the things that define us in a way. Yeah. And, and I, I think we have, uh, we have a sense of, of, of a common and mutual style. I think we, we have a trust in, in each other that has proven very beneficial for what we do. It makes it easier to... So this was your first project, yeah? Yes. <clears throat> and and that was actually, it was a project for the Denison uh, Flooring Company. So the basic idea, I mean, we actually did this project to test whether we could work together or not, oh, really? because we had our own sort of businesses uh, running parallel in a very small city, uh, as Copenhagen is, so we would be sort of each other's best competitors, and we were good friends. Uh, we would share a lot of, uh, we would actually have a lot of conversations about, you know, the, the field of architecture and all that, but we didn't know whether we would be good at working together. I mean, we're also pretty uh, stubborn, both of us. So we did that project, which was basically about uh, laying out uh, huge platforms of this beautiful wooden floor and reflected in the ceiling as well, because most flooring showrooms you show on walls, which is very odd because you never get the right lighting on these panels. So the whole idea was actually to have the ceiling and the floor to sort of reflect each other so that you would have as big surfaces as possible to judge sort of the... Also, uh, those steps are actually motorized uh, floor platforms. platforms it, it, was, it was all about the floor. There was a concert for this client. So, so it was fun going towards a project like this and, and really regarding it as, as an exercise in how do you maximize the exposure of one surface. Right. And, and again, it, it, sort of, it, it was very enjoyable because it was... It was a play with pure space, and it didn't need anything in it besides viewing those floor surfaces as often as in as many combinations as possible. But it was it was it went well. It was a fun project. It was are. a good uh, it was it was a good client, and I think it was a wise choice for us. We we've seen a lot of sort of constellations uh, <clears throat> pop up and disappear, and and I think it's been one of our sort of mutual uh, abilities is to be, be quite sort of uh, pragmatic about things as well, being very engaged at the same time. And these were your first products, right? I believe the well, this was, was like actually, yeah, old. this was the first uh, piece of furniture that we got into production. It was actually uh, made for a small jewelry uh, store. And, uh, and, and I think that was actually one of the I mean, that was one of the f fun things about doing the first projects 
was that we always would do our own bespoke pieces of furniture for each of the projects to sort of give it its own identity and and sort of create something special for that exact uh, location. And it kind of also put attention into sort of, I mean, I mean, we really sort of love from the very beginning to go into all the details of space, uh, not just the surfaces and the architectural features, but everything inside of it. And that was also a scale that we shared. Um, so that kind of, that journey continued. And, and for each of the projects we've done, uh, this is the uh, first Noma restaurant. We would do uh, furniture pieces that would sooner or later go into production or it would be already a manifested uh, uh, liaison with a manufacturer while sort of uh, developing the project. So, so, so that's sort of a part of our business that had been sort of going hand in hand from the very beginning. And we kind of really enjoy switching between these two sort of very different processes. I mean, building is a very organic process that involves a lot of people, a lot of outgoing energy. And doing design is much more sort of introvert. You are a little bit more sort of focused. You can print it out in one-to-one -one and draw it and redraw it. And then you can go back and you see it before you and then you adjust. And it's a completely different process, but it's two processes that kind of really brings things into balance in our, in our little world.